I made my own biogas plant and it makes cooking gas. It does, it does work. But before you get your hopes too high, in this video I'm going to debunk a few misconceptions while I'll show you how to build this setup. The process is rather simple, but will it be of any good use? Those are the questions we are going to answer in this video. I'm Josh and welcome to my channel, Video Epo. I've seen that people generally build a biogas plant to recycle kitchen waste and make some cooking gas out of it. My quest was different. I've been raising quails for the past six months and if you've been following my channel, I've been putting a series of videos on a separate playlist. The last video was about how to repurpose or recycle quail poop and one of the solutions was to feed that into a biogas digester like this. I shot the making of this biogas digester a while ago but I chose not to publish the video without giving you the user information or the user experience. In this video, I'll be talking about a few mistakes that I've done so that you can avoid them. So try and watch the video without skipping. As much as it is going to help you with information, it does leave a good impression on my channel's analytics as well. First off, we need a huge drum or a barrel. In this case, this one here is a 220 liters sealed drum. Trust me, sealed drums work best and will save a lot of hassle in the long run. The whole setup needs to be airtight, absolutely airtight. You could use barrels with lids like these, but believe me, it is going to make things difficult, worse even. Although I have a few barrels like these, I did invest on a sealed barrel. This barrel here is the digester of the biogas plant. What that means is all of the waste goes inside this barrel and it gets digested and in the process we get slurry and gas. You see the PVC pipe I'm going to use will not fit into this place because of this strange shape. And the same goes for the other side too. And sealed barrels like this should never be drilled on the seams. These seams are heat welded and drilling holes will destroy the structural integrity of the seams. The hole is going to be about 4 inches and cannot go here. So I'm going to make a hole and the placement will be a bit off-centered towards the edge. Next we need a PVC pipe roughly about the diameter of 4 or 5 inches. I had an old PVC pipe which I'm going to use so in a way another expense averted. The length of this PVC pipe needs to be at least a foot longer than the height of the barrel I'm using. I'm simply placing the pipe on the barrel and trace the circumference of the tube on the drum. Then I made a few holes for the jigsaw blade to slide in through. I want the tube to fit nice and tight here, no gaps, not only now but also in the future. So what I'm going to do now is leave a little bit of a gap here, like a millimeter or so and then cut a circle. We can always grind away excess material and make sure that the tube is fitting nice and snug. You can cut it with so many different ways, you can use a hot knife but I have the tools so it works for me. The hole is a few millimeters smaller than the actual size of the tube, so I think I'll have to grind away the excess material. Although I've made this hole, I will fit the PVC pipe only in the last. Now somewhere opposite and approximately at about the half height of the drum, we will make another hole. This hole is going to be fit with tank nipple. You can see that the reason why we fit the PVC pipe in the last because this is the only opening which allows us to reach inside the barrel. I am threading the other end of the pipe nipple from the inside. After this is done, we need to add a ball wall for which we need a suitable FTA. I am making an L joint and this L joint will be fit on the other end of the tank nipple from inside the barrel. It was quite a fortunate mistake that the hole made for the overflow pipe was just about at my hand's reach. Keep this in mind if you are going to work with any other kind of barrel. Let me try and explain what is happening inside a biogas plant using this small little diagram. I hope it makes sense. Now here is the input for the, for the drum and here is, is the gas output. It's closed everywhere. We need to have uh, another opening here in the middle. And, and this one is connected with an L joint. Once we start feeding the material inside, the slurry goes and it, uh, the level is up to this. The level of the slurry is exactly at this point. Beyond this point, uh, the slurry will travel through and it will flow out. And the slurry is actually making a, a, a seal here and there is no other way the gas that is formed 
in this waste can uh, be uh, going so it goes only through this particular hose now imagine if there is no L joint here as soon as it reaches this level the slurry it flows out but again there's an opening for the gas to escape we don't want that to happen and that's the reason why we make an L joint here and this is very important in some of the drums we don't have the uh, facility or you know the, the st uh, structure of the drum doesn't permit us to make holes in the body somewhere in the in the middle so in that case we can make a hole in the bottom and you can raise it up like that to the level where you want the slurry to be on and then we can take it out from there so the slurry gets filled up to this point here also and after this point it flows out in case if you want to connect this to a sewage system if you try and bend it like that and bring it to a sewage system this will create a suction effect all of the slurry will be drained out so to avoid that we need to make an L joint here and leave this portion open this portion is open so that there is a pressure of gas from here and again if the whole thing is sealed the gas has no place to go it travels through the hose now when it goes to the reservoir we have a ball valve here and this ball valve is connected uh, again it's connected to uh, a T joint and this one is going to be connected to a reservoir and this one has again got a ball valve and it goes to a let's say a burner whenever we are going to use the burner we block this way so that the gas from the reservoir can travel to the burner and whenever we don't want to use this we want to store we close this one so that the gas doesn't reach the burner and it reaches only the reservoir as simple as that let me just go ahead and finish with this overflow calm slurry removal pipe i must have misplaced my pipe wrench somewhere so i'm improvising with an f clamp whatever works works next we need five brass threaded hose connectors a couple of brass ball valve of matching thread size and a few hose clips to secure the hose. After making a hole for one of those hose connectors on top of the barrel, I roll the connector with a lot of Teflon tape and fit it. I even added epoxy to make sure that it is absolutely airtight. Next, let's begin connecting the hose. I cut three short pieces of the hose which are connected to the three sides of the T connector. The hose extending from the arms of the T-connector are fit with a ball valve on each end. The hose on the leg is connected to a truck tube. This tube is going to be the storage facility for the gas and note that the tube valve has to be removed from the tube before attaching the hose. Then a long hose is connected to one of the ball valves and the other end of this long hose is connected to the gas outlet on the barrel. The other ball valve which is free can be connected to a burner, of course using a hose. Next, I worked on the 4-inch PVC pipe and partially cut off one of its end. By doing this, the bottom is open, but it can still rest on the base of the barrel when it is inserted into the barrel through the hole we had drilled earlier. Finally, I used generous amounts of epoxy putty to seal all the joints and make it airtight. I also made this improvised funnel using an old water can. It's important to have a cap or a lid to close the pipe after adding the waste. Next we get to business, we need to fill the digester with cow dung slurry. But before that, let me open the valve that goes into the rubber tube and the other end is kept in the closed position. I got a bucket full of cow dung from a nearby cattle farm, made this into a slurry and poured it into the digester. Cow dung slurry needs to be added only for the first time and after this point you can start feeding the digester with kitchen waste. You can see that the tube is filling up with air that is being pushed out to the tube because we are filling the barrel with slurry. This is a quick check to ensure that there is no leak in the system. Next, I close the valve leading to the tube and open the exit valve and remove all of the air from the tube. Then close it again and open the valve leading to the tube. Now all we have to do is wait. Wait for the microbes to produce the gas and it will take about a week's time for that. This is a test footage after a week's time and I was truly excited to see this happen. I tested the system a couple of days later and it was working well. But this gas cannot be connected to a regular LPG gas burner. Biogas burners have slightly larger holes, so I bought a stove and tried cooking something with it. 
you can see here that the flame is invisible in broad daylight. See what happens when I hold a paper above the burner. Yes, it burns. So the flame is on, right? I shot this process again in the night and the gas was only enough to sustain flames for about 5 minutes. I waited for a couple of more days for the reservoir to fill up and you can see my wife was trying it out for the first time. Each and every time I lit up the stove, I used to close the valve that leads to the main digester and if at all the fire backfires or travels back, it will only reach this reservoir and I was pretty sure that there is not much of a gas and it might not cause a uh, accident or something like that but there was always a possibility so what we need to do is uh, make a flashback arrestor so that the flame does not travel back and create some kind of a fire accident i failed to do that but i'll be doing that in the future a fully filled tube like this was sustaining the stove only for about five minutes so if i were to cook something for about 30 minutes i would need about six or seven of these and let me tell you that it is not going to fill up in a day's time it is going to take a couple of days or three days or more than three days so what i'm trying to say is that with a setup like this, you may not be able to go completely off the grid. You may be able to partly reduce the cost that is incurred because of your cooking gas. Also note that the slurry which comes out of the overflow pipe can be used as a liquid fertilizer by mixing it in water in a ratio of 1 is to 10. And as for this project, did it work? It worked, you saw that. But to make it practically usable or usable practically, I might have to increase the reservoir size, maybe try and add a flashback arrestor and try and feed the digester on a regular basis and it should be able to work and you know kind of reduce the cost of uh, gas for the household. So with that said, I will see you in my next video. Until then, bye bye.